It's time to take a look at Windows 3.0, and to do that, we have with us the Windows Systems Engineer for Microsoft, Margaret Johnson. And also, we're going to find out why Windows seems to be such a hit. We have with us Gus Venditto, Executive Editor of PC Magazine. Gary? Yes, uh, Windows 1 Windows 2 has had some problems in terms of acceptance. Uh, uh, have some of those problems been solved in Windows 3, and just what's, what's going on with it? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the acceptance has definitely increased with Windows 3. Uh, right now, Windows is really hot. It's the top-selling program for PCs. It's, when it was released in May, it went to the top of the charts, and it stayed there. So the uh, problems with Windows 1 and 2 were more a matter of uh, perfecting it, and right now, uh, people seem to love Windows 3. Okay, now, Margaret, you uh, obviously know a lot about Windows 3. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, I'd like to do that by giving a little visual display on the monitor. Um, there's been a lot of enhancements, both visually and technically, to Windows 3. That includes proportional fonts um, in both the menuing and in the dialog boxes and the use of 3D buttons. The other nice thing that people are, are really excited about is we got away with the MS-DOS executive and replaced it with the three applications, the program manager for the logical grouping of applications. Mm -hmm. We also have the file manager down here so that we can directly manipulate files. And then the third is the task list to go between the tasks. The other um, great feature is in the setup. Before we had a Windows 286 and a Windows 386. That caused a lot of um, confusion. Now we have one version. You pop um, disk one into your A drive. You type in setup. The um, setup con determines your configuration, goes into a Windows application. Now, you can, once you go into Windows, you have this Windows application in which you can then reinstall drivers. Say, for example, you change your video display. You can pick a new video display. The next time you go into Windows, it's all set for you. Now, in terms of uh, development tools, what, what is uh, provided with Windows 3 for somebody who wants to write an application, say, under Windows? With uh, Windows 3, you need to get the software developer's kit, the SDK for Windows 3, and that includes actually, oh, this isn't my machine. <laughs> actually, there are a lot of tools like a dialog editor, an icon editor. Um, we assume Microsoft C6 uh, compilers, but there's a lot of 4GLs like Asymmetrics Toolbook, which are very mm -hmm. powerful which development environments mm -hmm. yeah. um, to, to get into. Um, getting back to the program manager, which is installed when, when you install Windows, you actually get three groups installed for you. An important group, um, these three groups are the main accessory and the games group. Mm -hmm. And the main is for system configuration to give you an idea of how you would use it. You can co totally customize your desktop. Let's say, for example, we want to change the color. We can do it from de default colors, and, or we could get very bold and, and just... Um, Mess it up on your own. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> and considering that my, my lack of color taste is, is quite strong, I'll, 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 I'll do one that I, I feel yeah. safe with, the ocean. I don't want to get anybody sick. And you can customize the desktop not, even, not just with colors, but also with um, background bitmaps. Say you have a company logo. Well, we're in San Francisco, so I'm a big Niner fan, so I'll put back my Niner logo for the, for the game tomorrow. And, and you're going to work against that background. Yeah. <laughs> So all Sunday, I can just keep <laughs> saying, you know, go Joe. Okay. Do the okay. big one. Okay, Margaret, also, uh, what are the system requirements? What do you assume as far as graphics device, for example? Uh, good question. Right now, Windows is, has three modes. We have the real mode, the standard mode, and the enhanced mode. In setup, it's determined what type um, from your machine requirements you would have. The real mode is for downward compatibility with 2.x. It will run applications that aren't Windows 3 ready. It is also for machines with less than one megabytes of memory. Mm -hmm. um, the standard mode runs uses the protected environment of the 2 and mm -hmm. 386 uh, with for 1 megabyte and greater machines. And the enhanced mode, the 386 enhanced mode, will use the virtual memory management of the 386 to virtualize the memory for more memory. And also for the standard DOS applications mm -hmm. can run in the virtual 86 mode. So when you're talking about Windows 3 as uh, the executive in this case, you're not really running uh, MS-DOS underneath it then, huh? I mean, it runs as a, as a special, in a special area, as a special right, task, exactly. rather than being the executive. Right, we're trying to make it more logical as you use your desktop with Windows 3. Margaret, briefly, I want you to show me the dynamic data exchange feature of this. Um, that's a good point. Windows, a very powerful feature of Windows 3 that we want to get across is the <laughs> inter-process communications. You saw it first with cut, copy, and paste. It's followed with Windows, in the Windows environment with the dynamic data exchange, or DDE. In 2.x, you could use it, but it wasn't all that easy, and you couldn't use a lot of data. Now with Windows 3 memory restrictions going away, you can connect the dots between the applications right, with show, dynamic show us data. How you do that. Okay, so 
if I change the number of Joes the next month, he has uh, 10,000 units. All documents associated with that will automatically be updated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can and see this change, yeah. be, being the start of an, a powerful executive information system. Sure. Gus, I want to turn to you for a second. What do you see developer support for Windows 3.0? Is that changing too in terms of the, you said user acceptance has changed? Right? Yeah, there have been a lot of companies been working on Windows in the last year. Windows has become a great forum for small companies to uh, get a, a, a leg in the market. What has been a source of controversy is that some of the large software publishers, software publishing mm -hmm. Lotus, they were waiting for OS 2. Yeah. And they're, they've been passing up Windows, but I think they're going to take a second look and they're uh, kind of stepping back and getting their programmers uh, doing Windows programming instead of the OS2 programming that had been the top priority. Do you see uh, uh, there are quite a few applications then coming up under Windows at this point? And there have been a flood of them coming out, mm -hmm. and that's partly why it's been so successful because uh, in the earlier versions of Windows, there was nothing really to run under Windows. It took a long time. PageMaker came out. Now with uh, the... the uh, Windows 3.0, everybody's upgraded, everybody is coming out with a lot of new utilities. Um, programs that were running under different platforms are coming to Windows, Ventura Publisher is coming to Windows, and uh, next year we'll have WordPerfect and Lotus 1.2.3, and that's going to really solidify mm -hmm. it as being a major, uh, it, it's really the center of the PC right now. All right, Gus, Margaret, thank you very much. Well, there is one problem with Windows. You do need at least a 286 machine and 640K of RAM, though a 386 and 2 megs is the ideal.